it is hot. Hey friends, welcome to, welcome back to my channel. I'm outside today because it's actually a really wonderful, beautiful, sunny day. Slightly hot though, not gonna lie, slightly hot. But I wanna talk about the books that I read in November because I had a fabulous reading month. I read so many incredible books. Are you happy? I'm happy. I'm happy because of this. Incredible. Anyway, let's talk statistics. Let's talk statistics. Oh, before we go into it, hey everyone, I'm Al. Welcome to my little bookish channel. If you enjoy your time here, please subscribe and like this video. <laughs> I really appreciate it. So, let's, let's talk books. Okay, so in the month of November, I read a total of 14 books. One of the best months that I've had recently. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm just so excited. I read a total of 14 books. I have mostly read romance, fantasy, and LGBTQIA plus books, which I feel like is a trend for me, to be honest. And my average rating was 4.48. So like when I say that I've had a really good reading month, I mean it. It was utterly fantastic. Okay, so I want to organize this by rating. Okay, and I want to leave the best for last. I hope that's okay with you. Um, but yeah, tell me below like your favorite book of the month, your not favorite book of the month. We all have those, I understand. And let's get let's get cracking. So the book that I rated three point five stars, which is the lowest book that I rated this month, actually, um, was this one, right here. Uh, it's actually a sequel. It's Something Spectacular by Alexis Hall. I have a reading vlog coming up where I read this book and I talk a bit more about my opinions uh, in, a bit, in, in way more detail. But I gave this 3.5 stars. Uh, it's not to say that I didn't like it. I, I did enjoy it. I think Alexis Hall writes some of the most beautiful romance, um, very underrated as like an author. Like just some of the words, the way that things are described needs more attention. Alexis Hall is doing that, right? And I really love the way they write sexual tension and romance. Um, but this one? was just not, it didn't hit as hard as Something Fabulous, which is the first book in the series. Um, and I think it's because I wasn't necessarily interested in the character Peggy. So the main character in this is called Peggy. Um, she is the best friend of Arabella, who we meet in book one. And Arabella is Bonnie's uh, sister. Bonnie is one of the uh, male leads, one of the men. In something fabulous who uh, romances Valentine right so they're all connected I wasn't necessarily interested in Peggy in the first place I think she was like an interesting character um, she doesn't label herself as non-binary but uh, or like gender fluid um, because you know those terms are like slightly anachronistic uh, but she doesn't necessarily identify as a woman or as a man um, but she goes by she her pronouns so representation wise this was amazing but I just didn't really care for Peggy um, I think the star of the show was Orfeo who is the love interest of this Orfeo is an uh, castrati and I should say castrati uh, and they're like an opera singer it's essentially an opera singer and um they were just fantastic like their story was so interesting i wanted more of them and i didn't really feel like we got a lot of them i just wanted more of Orpheo. i think they were so much more interesting than peggy and i don't think necessarily that peggy really oh what's that word Peggy didn't necessarily abide by the boundaries that Orfeo 
stated very early on, Orpheo was like, I don't, I don't want a relationship. And Peggy was like, oh, but I, come on. And she kept on kind of butting heads with Orpheo about that. And it's just like, babe, like it's not, it, it's, I think it's supposed to be romantic, but it's not. Listen to your partner. All they want is just a good time. Stop trying to make fetch happen, Peggy. So yeah, I don't know, it was a bit, it's kind of more boring than I anticipated. Um, which I, I don't know, maybe because I wanted more camp, more ridiculousness, you know? I wanted the ridiculousness that was so inherent in something fabulous. I didn't really get that in here. But yeah, Peggy was just a really uh, dull character to be in the mind of, in my personal humble opinion. And if you heard my door open, it was because my dog just came outside. The next book that I gave 3.7 five stars, Woodlanders by Thomas Hardy. I did, I've already talked about this in the Victoria vlog, uh, I think, I hope I did. I love Thomas Hardy now. I really enjoy his books. Surprise, surprise. Was not expecting that to be perfectly honest. Uh, this was really good. I love the drama, I love the tea. I love Thomas Hardy's ability to write women and really interesting and engaging stories that you don't really expect out of a classic. Uh, it feels like a soap opera, but very much better written, right? But it was just so similar to Return of the Native that I couldn't help comparing it to Return of the Native and it fell very short of the Return of the Native. Can you tell that I loved the Return of the Native? Yeah. If you want more of my opinions based on this book, please see my Victoria vlog. I honestly forgot that I finished this in November. Really, like legitimately forgot until I was making this list. Then I gave a few books four stars let's talk about them um the first one that i gave four stars that i don't actually own i read it as an audiobook was pearl uh by sian hughes sean hughes i don't know how to pronounce i should have looked it up um it was long listed for the booker i read this because i had a video that i was planning on doing but i got to scrap that uh, I really liked this. I really liked it. I think I read this too far apart when I would pick up the audiobook that it lost a bit of its emotional intensity for me over the course of time. Like it literally took me months to finish the audiobook. Uh, but I really liked it. I really liked it. I would honestly reread it physically uh, because I think I would annotate it. The exploration of motherhood as both like a young girl who lost her mother as well as being a mother was really interesting and heartbreaking. Um, like I felt as though it was a slight coming of age story but doing that within like the, the framework scope of being in like constant grief. And it was just, it was just really good. It was just really good. Um, I think I teared up a few times. I might have cried in the beginning, to be honest. But yeah, I definitely cannot wait to see what Hughes does. That was a weird, there's like a light, as you can see. Uh, I cannot wait to see what Hughes does in the future. But the audiobook was good. I just took too much time in like picking it up and stuff because I wasn't necessarily gravitating towards it, which is why I think I gave it four stars. I wasn't excited necessarily to pick it up. Um, it was just there when I wanted something to listen to if I was on a train or if I wanted to do housework and like listen to something. It was good and I would recommend it. Who would I recommend it to? It does feel like a book that people who like, people who like, um, I 
I feel like Louis Kennedy. Is it Louis Kennedy? Oh my god, trespasses or trespasses. I feel like if you enjoy that vibe, you might enjoy Pearl. So good book. Happy that I read it. And the next two books that I gave four stars is from the same author, and you can see them right now. I read two Ellie Hazelwoods. Well, actually, technically, like three. So let's start with this one. This is Loathe to Love You. It's the collection of feminist novellas. And I read the first novella, Under One Roof, I think last year. And I enjoyed it. It was a good little romance. And so I picked this up earlier this year and decided to like finish the novellas. So I read Stuck With You and Below Zero. I liked them. Like they're nothing to write home about. I just love the way Ellie Hazelwood creates her romance. I love the way that she creates her tension. I think she is one of my favorite romance authors, like contemporary romance authors right now for adults. I don't I I don't think I will ever hate an Ali Hazelwood book because even tropes that I think that I hate, like the love hypothesis was just fundamentally a fantasy to me because you cannot do that shit here in Australia unless you want to be in prison. But it but I loved it. You know, I ate that shit up. I was there for it. Same thing here. I definitely think Stuck With You was the weakest novella um, and Below Zero I think was possibly the best one in this in this collection. I just thought it was interesting and fun and adorable and that's what I want from Ali Hazelwood. I want the sexy with the adorable, you know? So I'm really happy that I finally read this uh, and then I picked up something that I didn't anticipate picking up which was Ellie Hazelwood's Check and Mate. Now this is her foray, foray into young adult romance. I gave her four stars so I did enjoy it and again there is a reading vlog coming out where I talk a bit more about this in depth. It was good but the main character Mallory they got to a point, it got to a point where she was annoying the fucking shit out of me. Like she just was trying so hard to be annoying that it became so much more frustrating to read as the reader. Like you're making your own issues, right? And yeah, I don't know, it was just, Fine. It was good. Um, I, I just, I, I just think that Ali Hazelwood for me will always be an adult romance author. I think you can do so much in terms of like emotional nuance, and you can think about things and have characters reflect a bit more critically on things as an adult than a young adult. And now Mallory is what 18, 19, and she acts like that right so it was it was kind of a, and I think because I read Loathe to Love You and then I read this I was still very much in adult Ali Hazelwood romance brain and it was yeah uh but like the idea of the chess and like rivalries but not really he falls first like that was really cute like it was cute but there was not enough time of them being a couple that was really on page. Um, you don't really like care about their relationship. It just needed a bit more like domestic fluff, right? Uh, but I did like the way it ended because an issue that I have with young adult romances is, is that it's very easy to be like, and everything's happily ever after. It's like, bitch, they're 12, right? In this case, it was kind of left open-ended. Like it was like they were together, but they didn't really announce it to the world because they're, you know, these huge chess champions and they're kind of in their own little lane and they're just like chugging along by themselves as a couple. And 
it's like this idea of like yeah like who knows what happens in the future but like for right now they're together and they have been for the past however many years and I think that was really nice uh, I think that was a really good way to to like end a young adult romance so I will pick up any other young adult romances that she does because it's Ali Hazelwood but in comparison to her adult doesn't hit for me but for a young adult person they will love this like if you are a person who is a young adult pick this up like I think you will have such a great time it is like relatable it is you know very much situated in our contemporary times and I think you'll also relate to that like it's just a very well done young adult romance like the fact that I gave this four stars is saying something it's saying really really good some things okay and then the next one, <laughs> the next one we're talking about is my 4.5 star reads oh my god okay what do I want to talk about first uh let's do this one here wildfire Wildfire by Hannah Grace. This is the sequel to Icebreakers. Now y'all know I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for a sports hockey romance. I eat that shit up. Call me a basic bitch. I do not care. I love it. I love it. Okay. I, anyway. <laughs> so Wildfire is book two in that series. And we follow Russ, who is a character that we're introduced to in Icebreakers. Um, here's the reason why some shit goes down and he also has his own shit going down as well and I loved it so he goes in the summer he goes to like a summer camp to work because he needs money and he does not want to be home because his father is an alcoholic and his brother is never there um, he's, a, he's a rock star his brother <laughs> just casually and he can't he just can't deal with it right it's a lot for him so he goes in his summer camp um unbeknownst to him the woman that he had a one night stand with at his like hockey bro party when they were saying goodbye to the seniors she's there also working and it's so cute because the one night stand happened and he doesn't really necessarily do that and she was just like immediately interested in him and she's like this is unlike me uh and they you know have the one night stand and it's amazing but he spends so much time in the bathroom psyching himself up to ask her out that she thinks that he's trying to be kind to her but like let her know that she needs to leave so she leaves it's so cute it's so cute when they finally had that conversation, I was like, oh my god, I love, I'm eating it up. I'm eating it up. I love it so much. So they go to the camp and it's, it's really adorable. It's really adorable. The main girl character, whose name is Aurora, she has a lot of issues. Um, and it came to a point where I'm just like, babe, for you, I think you need some psychological help because I don't think that just like one conversation at the end with your dad like helped really anything. Um, I, I need to reread it, but sometimes I feel like it ventures slightly into romanticizing mental health. Um, like Russ and Aurora both are dealing with their own issues and they have traumas associated with those issues. But, uh, it's kind of like glazed over it's like oh well, I have you so I'm fine and at one point Aurora becomes like so dependent on Russ just like being there and existing and, and loving her and in a way like providing validation to her own self-worth that when he disappears one night because he has an emergency with his father and like doesn't tell anyone he just like goes to the, his boss and says I'm out of here I need to go like drive to the emergency room when he comes back and tells and like she confronts him about it and he tells her like what happened she's and she turns it on herself and she does that a couple times and she's like oh well you know you left and 
I, what did she say? It was something like, oh, I just, you left me all by myself. And like, there was like, you didn't tell me anything. And I was about to, you know, go and ask this other guy at the camp to like sleep with me in order to seek attention. And I'm like, is that healthy, babe? That's not healthy. I think you need help. Um, and then like Russ is put in a position of like where he apologizes. And it's, I just found that slightly, not strange, it needed a bit more work. You know, I think it just needed a bit more, let's actually like do something about this. Um, but I, but in saying that, I know like it sounds as though I didn't like it, but I love to get four and a half stars because I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for happy endings. I'm a sucker for, um, I really enjoyed the vibes of this. Hannah Grace is, kind of reminds me slightly of Ali Hazelwood, although I think Ali Hazelwood is, like writing wise, is slightly better and in terms of like sophistication of ideas. But Hannah Grace is getting there, right? Like I just really liked it. I really liked it and I really like that Hannah Grace emphasizes like the importance of found families and how families can be more than blood and I think that's just like so important and just so wonderful to read okay wildfire by Hannah Grace really love this um check the trigger warnings though sorry check the trigger warnings um because it can it got randomly quite dark um pertaining to like alcoholism and uh, like emotional manipulation, I guess. Um, I think you would call it, yeah. But what I also enjoyed is that Aurora is very like sexually active and there's no judgment, which I thought was great, so. Hi, just future editing me. I forgot to say this. Um, she's like sexually active which is great there's like no like real judgment in like the narrative you're not put in a position where you you are supposed to judge her it's not like that she is who she is which is great however i should point out that her like sexual activities and her sexual like the fact that she partakes in casual sex a lot or like not a lot but like that's what she does is directly related to her trauma and her um and her like very like emotionally abusive relationship with her father um and like again it needed a bit more work to i always say this but like the nuance of that like it's really heavy shit you can't just get like you can't just fall in love and have that one relationship and suddenly you're fixed and i'm trying to remember I'm trying to remember. I think she does at the end say to her best friend that she might go to therapy or something because like she realizes it. But yeah, anyway, I just wanted to like make sure that that's made clear. Oh god, Hunter. Cool bananas. The next book we'll talk about is this one here. I read this one. For thy great pain have mercy on my little pain by Victoria Mackenzie. Right, it's so pretty. Now this book, Wildfire, and the next book that I'm going to talk about is also um, in an upcoming reading vlog that might be coming up more towards like the end of December because I still need to finish filming it. It's going to be a fucking huge vlog. Anyway, this I picked up spontaneously at the Chestnut Tree Bookshop in Footscray, I think. Footscray? Is this in Footscray? Is that bookshop in Footscray? I think it's in Footscray. Oh my god, I'm going... It has to be in Footscray. I was with Emma and Tiff when I picked this up very spontaneously because a woman was talking about it to her friend and I was like, this is literally me in a book, I need to read it. And I loved it so much. So, I don't know how I would pitch this. You have two women, both, who both talk to and see Jesus Christ. Uh, one goes the 
um, abess root, abess, no, not abess, an anchoress, anchoress root, which is when you kind of, a woman goes to a church, gets like inducted as an anchoress, and you swear, like you can't leave the church, you're placed in like a little cell room situation, no one can ever really look at you. Um, it's very much like for prayer meditation and like I think that's basically it and I you pay for that right so you have one woman who does that her name's Julian and then you have another woman who Margaret Margaret I'm pretty sure her name's Mar Marjorie oh my god Marjorie has like 14 kids has a husband that she cannot stand because she never wanted to get married in the first place she kind of doesn't enjoy anything relating to marriage in the bed as a mother she's it's not, not for her um but she has to do it right but she sees jesus and she's never been quiet about that the fact that she sees jesus and so she goes out in her town and like talks about being able to see Jesus and of course she has to be careful be uh, it, women can't preach um, and so she said I'm not preaching I'm having conversations and she gets you know dragged to some priests and church officials uh, who are trying to label her as a heretic but because Jesus is talking through her um, she is able to like answer all their questions quite perfectly <laughs> and it was really interesting i like i really liked it i like the way it was written it was written in like these sort of like fragments but still in quite a coherent kind of story um julian and marjorie do eventually meet and it's it's just beautiful i found it quite beautiful um, it is very much using religion and theology to commentate on the position of women and the way and the way that uh, they are controlled and it kind of leans into this idea because this is in medieval times I should have said that uh, leans into the idea of like how the church utilizes its authority in a, in a way to control and coerce um, especially women it was really really interesting um, if you don't enjoy very religious kind of theolo theological types of stories then don't pick this up but it's a very short read I read it in a day not even a couple hours and I just I thought it was just so unique and so imaginative that it was just, it was a hit for me. It was a hit! And the last book that I gave four and a half stars was A Power Unbound by Freya Mars. Now this is book three in the Binding Trilogy. The first book was A Marvelous Light, the second book was A Restless Truth, and now we have A Power Unbound. This is the book where we finally get Jack's perspective. Um, I really loved it. I really loved it. I love Freya Mask's writing, I love the magic system, I love just the romance of it all. It's great, okay? It's such a great queer series, like queer historical fantasy series. Literally, okay? However, <laughs> the reason I didn't give it five stars is purely because of the last, like, I'll say 70 pages. It was so anticlimactic. Is it climactic? Climatic. It was just so... Oh, is that all? Oh, oh, okay. It happened so quickly. It's like, we've been building to this moment for three fucking books. And that's the end scene that you're giving me? Are you serious? Like, that's the scene. That's like the, the ultimate scene where everything is happening. That really annoyed me. <laughs> it really annoyed me. Um, the, what's his name? Alan? Alan, who is the romance interest and also one of the main characters, 
he an aspect of his plot line like he was working for the enemy and like he's kind of like a traitor like the and although his reasons for it is because they were you know threatening his family it was it was very much pushed to the side quite quickly and i'm like can we at least, like i didn't want it to be drama i didn't want it to be a like a, a conflict happening but i feel like it needed a bit more conversation <laughs> right just a bit more conversation just a little bit um yeah but it was mainly hey hunter it was mainly the like end action scene where everything happens i was like is really really okay um and i wanted more of alan and jack being together like that's what i wanted and it kind of annoyed me also sorry just thinking back in the first book we meet oh i forgot her name robin's secretary whose name does escape me um adelaide robin and adelaide marry uh you know because society but it wasn't really necessary for robin but adelaide their parents were talking like her parents were talking and like society was talking because she's you know, a young a, a woman getting on you know so she needed to be married and then at one point they try and use the excuse oh it's because of like the magic adelaide needs to be like married into the family so that the magic doesn't harm her but then it's like never really talked about the marriage itself like the fact that they're engaged was mentioned maybe like three times before the epilogue and it comes out of nowhere and i just i understood what was trying to happen but i don't think the execution of it was necessarily well done and i don't think it was necessary at all i don't know it just like felt weird and it also it felt like freya mars realized that she didn't really do much with adelaide's character because adelaide is an incredible character such a badass so intelligent didn't really do much with her character and all of a sudden she's like oh like look no like give her an actual story like she's she needed more it was kind of a disappointment in that regard but everything else really enjoyed um not as much as a marvelous light have to say a marvelous light is still the best book in this series um so yeah anyway <laughs> now to my five stars which as you can tell a few let's start with the non-fiction i read two non-fiction books in november i read what's eating the universe and other cosmic questions by paul davies uh, very, it's about space loved it and then i finally finished braiding sweet grass indigenous wisdom scientific knowledge and teachings of plants by robin wall kimmerer loved each of these books right this one just like scratched an itch in my brain that i didn't realize that i was desperate to scratch i love space i love space i love everything about space i love learning about black holes especially i just i find space so fucking fascinating and this was such a perfect like reintroduction into space knowledge okay it is accessible without being so fully like simplified that it has no meaning um paul davies is like a lecturer professor whatever so he, he understands how to teach which i think is really important um and it's just so good it's so good every chapter is uh, a question that he's been asked basically or like questions that he sees around that he just tries to answer and a lot of the times it's like, eh, you know, space is space. I just really love it. But other times it's like, no, like this is what this is. I, I loved it. I loved it so much. It's just so interesting. And I immediately went and got another like space book, nonfiction book to read, um, hopefully in December. 
I just, oh, I love Space so much. And this is such a good book. I recommend this one. This is really, really good. Um, I, I think read this before you read anything from Stephen Hawking. <laughs> And then braiding sweet grass. There's a reason why every person on the planet in our universe loves this book. It's because it's fucking amazing, okay? I love this book. I love this so much. And if I had finished this before I filmed my cozy books video, this would be a cozy book. This would be a cozy book. Read this. Read this. Read this. Read this so much. Read this right now. Please do it. I love this book, which I've already said. Every time I would pick this up, I would cry. Not in sadness. Actually, no. Yes, in sadness. But also just in pure awe of how the author was able to, you know, to write like put forth these ideas in a way that evoked such emotion okay like she would describe trees and make me cry about oak trees so good the author uh, Robin Wall Kimura is a botanist and a scientist like an ecologist scientist as well as an indigenous woman so the way that there is aspects of herself met like intersected and like created this brilliant brilliant okay this is brilliant I am not what you would call a garden girl okay this that you see around me is not because of me okay it is because of my mother I do not get the green thumb I am too full of doubt I'm like, is the plant okay? Like, is this enough dirt? I don't think it's enough dirt, but I don't want to suffocate the poor, the poor plant. I'm watering this plant. Am I watering it too much? Am I not watering it enough? Like, what's going on? Why doesn't it love me? I'm too much in doubt when I'm doing garden things. I need clear instructions. My mum does things on, like, whims and vibes, right? That's, that's how she rolls. My grandmother was the same. But holy shit. I was, she had me like interested in swamplands. Like she was just, we need to read this book. We need to then formulate an action plan. We need to implement what is being said here. I have purchased a book that is called Sand Talk uh, by, mm, oh my God. He created the eight ways. Oh my god, my, my mind is my mind is a sieve. I'll put his details down below. But I purchased that book because I was like, okay, I need I need now to understand my local like my context. Like I wanna see Indigenous Australians perspective because wow. Um and like I read I read like Dark Emu and those kind of books as well, but I think sand talk is is more along the lines of of like braiding sweet grass of just like the combination of memoir and like actual scientific talk or just like I just find that that combination really fascinating I don't know but the ability for Rob, Robin Wall Kimura to just right everything is so poetic everything is like every word on the page is deliberate this book changed me fundamentally as a person uh, I would like I annotated this like crazy I read this on the train to and from work um, and I would be crying on the train to the city because it's just so it's just so beautifully written and it really changed the way that I understood the land. Um, yeah, so fantastic. Read it. Read it. Pretty please. You won't, you won't be disappointed, I promise. And the next book was this one, A Man Called Uwe by Frederick Buckman. I finally, finally read this. I've read two Frederick Buckman's 
previously. I read Anxious People and um, and On the Way Home, The Way Gets Longer and Longer or something like that. I both gave them like four and a half to five stars. I find Frederick Buckman's ability to write humans so real, like so real. This one was amazing. It was so good. There's a reason why this is like a cult favorite. It's just that good. Like it's such an easy read, but it is so wonderful. It is so wonderful. It is, it's heartwarming and heartbreaking at the same time. I then read, then watched, sorry, um, A Man Called Otto that has Tom Hanks in it. I read, I watched that with my mum after I finished reading this and I really loved that as well. Like, I just love this story. I loved the found family aspect to it. I just, there's a reason why it touches so many people, you know? Really love this, five stars. Uh, and then I read <laughs> Resident Search by uh, Nalini Singh. I have waxed poetic about Nalini Singh on my channel previously. This is book, I don't know, 14, 15, no, 20 in the Psy Changeling universe, but book five or six in the Psy Changeling Trinity series. Actually, before I say that, let me just, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's the seventh book in the Psy Changeling Trinity series. I love this, go five stars. This book does not answer any questions. <laughs> it creates more questions to be answered. I was sitting here like, Nalini, Nalini, how dare you? The audacity that you have right now. We have, do we have an extension of the politics? Kind of. A lot of things happen, but at the same time, nothing really happens. It's like a really interesting, uh, paradox in this book okay it's also like a random serial killer so he's a woman by the way we support women's wrongs and she's out here killing people um who remind her of her sister who abandoned her who's like the main character in this book um theo uh theo marshall marshall yeah theo marshall the twin sister of pax marshall who is a very powerful um, man, and if you've read this series, you'd know that name Marshall, it, it does ring familiar because Counselor Marshall Hyde was the psychopath, was an actual psychopath, and they're related to him. It was, it's grandchildren, so. Obviously the changelings globally are very not happy to work with the marshals because of who their grandfather was and what his grandfather did to changelings and just like sigh overall but theo works with pavel pavel who is part of the uh changeling pack the bear changeling pack in russia and so pavel and theo meet it's kind of like an insta love situation but i don't mind insta love in these books i'm a sucker for it in nalini singh's size changing universe because i just love i just it's a trope that i love when it's done well and nalini singh does it well so like there's these institutions around the world called rehab rehabilitation centers and they were used to essentially brainwash Psy. now if you don't know what the fuck i'm talking about I've talked about these worlds in previous videos, so I'm pretty sure my cozy video that I put out recently, I talk about it. Uh, so like, go to there, because <laughs> I'm not gonna sit here. I'm already, I've already been talking for too long. Um, so they go to investigate one that's in Russia that seems to be like siphoning funds off the Marshall like family finances and it's supposed to have been closed down or something so they go and they uncover a lot of shit that councillor marshall hyde was doing um but they also figure out a couple things as well um i really liked it i really liked it but it didn't answer a lot of questions it actually again like i said creates more questions and i think 
it's going to be so interesting to see how Nalini Singh decides to close the overarching plotline that is happening recently regarding the Sinet. Like, I just don't know how she's going to do it. And I think a couple weeks ago, it actually got announced who the next book is about. And I thought, like many others, we were going to get Pax's novel because, like, you'd think that would be like a very easy flow, right? No. Nalini Singh out here, like, giving twists and turns, right? Like, she's like, oh, you want Pax? No, I'm going to give you Remy, who you asked for like 10 years ago. I love her. I love her. She, Nalini Singh, she keeps on giving. She's a gift. I love her so much. If you don't know, Remy uh, is an alpha, like a leopard alpha of Wildfire, the Wildfire pack. Look at me talking as though these are real. Like, look at me <laughs> giving you politics um, for like a fictional world. But Remy is, uh, I'm pretty sure he's a leopard or like some sort of cat, right? Uh, out in Canada. He's Canadian. Do you think he plays hockey? Oh my god, do you think Melanie Singh's gonna write like the first ever paranormal hockey romance? Please. Melanie, if you're watching this, please. Please, can he just like play hockey? I'm pretty sure he's Canadian. Or did I just make that up? Am I projecting? Anyway, uh, wildfire pack it's been a pack that we've been introduced really early on in the Psy Changeling series like the original series and we've been wanting a Remy book for ages but it's been so long that we obviously thought like that's never gonna happen but bitch it's happening it's happening and I don't know where where's it gonna go I really hope he falls in love with an arrow I want it to be a Psy because I want it to be an arrow I think that'll be so cute arrows are like an assassination squad I want it, I want it to happen, but don't know what's happening in terms of plot, but like, very excited to see what Nalini Singh does next, like, so excited. Um, because she literally, this series is my comfort series. I want to reread them next year. I do, I want to reread them. Uh, I just love, I love everything except for Tangle of Need. That book, dead to me. I pretend it doesn't exist. Like I literally have every book in the Side Changing series, like physically I own it, um, except for Tangle of Me because I refuse to believe that my queen Delaney Singh wrote that. Anyway, um, it was because of the characters. Didn't like them. Didn't like their story. It was annoying. Then I read Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. Uh, this is the prequel to Legends and Lattes. Even though it's the prequel, do not read this before you read Legends and Lattes. Read Legends and Lattes first. Trust me. Listen to me. Okay? Don't read this first. You will not understand anything in regards to like the little nuggets that are sprinkled throughout that you're like, oh my god, that's how she does this and that's why she gets that. Like you make the connections that makes the reading experience so much better if you've read Legends and Lattes. And the epilogue will not make sense to you if you have not read Legends and Lattes. So like, chronologically, this book happens before Legends and Lattes. But within the universe of Legends and Lattes, you need to read this after you've read Legends and Lattes, okay? Anyway, this was really cute. Get five stars. It was fantastic. It had an element no, not had an element. It had elements, okay? It was giving everything, okay? Travis Baldry's writing, oh my God, it stepped up. I, I, was, I read, I buddy read this with Hannah when we were at Phillip Island, which added to the experience, I must say. Um, and we're sitting there like, oh my God, his writing is incredible. Like it's definitely stepped up. Like Travis Baldry did not come to play, literally right so Viv is younger in this one she's like just starting out basically as a mercenary she gets injured she is definitely a younger Viv like Travis really conveys Viv as like this stubborn brash arrogant kind of orc 
um, who gets injured and feels humiliated as a result and is taken to a seaside village where she needs to recover and she fucking hates it uh, but she meets Fern and she meets Roast the owl dog and that's Fern and she has a little romance with the baker and it's so cute it's so cute there's a bookshop that she helps like make a thing you know in the, in the in the seaside town there's also like a big bad that's woven through really well it has everything in it i just really loved it it's so good <sighs> what i want now is i don't know if it would be like a sequel to legends of lattes but taking place after the epilogue about what the like what happens with the epilogue like if i want the letter that is written in the epilogue to that to be the book three or book two the sequel to legends of lattes you can add a big bad if you want but you don't need to we just want domestic fluff okay travis baldry please anyway I've been speaking for so long, my throat is hurting. The last book that I gave five stars. Might be a surprise to you. I gave it five stars. Before you hate me, okay? I got sucked in. I'm the victim here, okay? I, it was just so, okay, this is what happens. Okay, this is, this is the, so much happens. It's so pacey, it's so fast, things are happening that you, like I can't, couldn't help but love it. And I was buddy reading it with Hannah. It was just the most perfect experience of reading this. All you could hear us yell is Violet is a dumb bitch because that is the theme of Iron Flame. Violet is a dumb bitch. The fact that people talk about how intelligent she is, I mean, I think they need glasses because they obviously can't see what's right in front of them. Violet is not intelligent. Everything that happens is a result of luck. And then sometimes she has like a brainwave, but that's atypical for her. She's so dumb. She does things and I'm just like, oh my god. And like, her constant whining. I feel like I threw the book. In my head I threw the book. Because I was staying in Philip Island so I didn't want to like harm the walls, right? So many times the frustration was building, right? But everything else, but it was good and daddy zayden was even better i just i'm a sucker for this it i think i said this when i talked about fourth wing it makes me feel like a teenager i'm just like so obsessed with it i'm when i'm reading it i'm so sucked in and i feel like it's it's so it's just so provoking of emotions and like investment and commitment like you thought I just fell in love with the characters and I really liked the way that things happened a lot of the twists and the turns I don't like the way it ended I think that was kind of really lazy as a plot point um, but you don't read these books for good quality writing this is my humble opinion but loved it it reminds me of Sarah Diamas um like those types of books love it love it I'm obsessed with it and we got more dragons in this which is what I wanted originally just more dragons and we got really interesting dragon lore especially towards the end um did this need to be as big as it is no um there was a really quick turnaround between fourth wig and iron flame which i i see online that people 
are kind of anno not annoyed by it, but they're saying that maybe the lack like the qu lack of quality is because of that um i think the lack of quality was always there it's just fourth wing had us all in a trick hold but i gave this five stars i gave fourth wing four and a half stars because the author leans into that like she knows and it's fucking fantastic what other author on the back of the blurb it's blurbed by a character it's not even blurbed by an author it's blurbed by the character zayden the kind the geniusness right like she knows what she's doing she knows what she's writing uh i honestly didn't find a difference in terms of like writing quality and and pacing and character development um than in fourth wing to be honest they're very much the same i actually thought that this did better in terms of pacing because something was happening always and i really liked the focus on knowledge is power i thought that was really good um but yeah so like i don't know what else to say other than i loved it and we're gonna we're gonna move on we're gonna move on now okay but i i read i read this and i ate that shit up i love the drama and that is the 14 books that i've read in the month of december in the month of november oh my god i'm i i'm up ahead in the month of november i had a really great reading month i'm really really happy with everything that i read to be honest i love reading november was a month where i was just like i love reading this is why i love reading and it's so good december is good i'm reading a really good book i'm reading bring up the bodies by hillary mantle but because it's historical fiction and it's a literary novel it is taking me for fucking ever to read it uh so december's gonna be a bit more slow but having a really good time having a really good time anyway that's all that's all that i read um i have stuff in the description box various links um to like reading lists and to uh like people's like instagram handles that i think maybe you should check out because we should be supporting uplifting and empowering palestinian voices right now um as well as educating ourselves it's really important to educate ourselves so check all that down below i think they should still be working but i'll double check and as always friends take care take care please december is a fucking hard month it really is like why are we still working the minute it turns to december we should all be off be honest like why do we work why do we need to make money why so annoying anyway <laughs> happy reading uh stay safe and i will see you i promise next week and not take a random week off i got sick that's my excuse like i actually got sick it was the entire thing anyway <laughs> bye friends <laughs>